So this is my marble coaster. It measures the or counts the effect of how different objects of different mass, like a large and smaller marble, uh, has effects on a different track and which one would be faster and which one would be slower. My initial hypothesis was that the larger marble, this one right here if you can see it, would be faster because it was heavier and the effect of gravity on drag would drag it down and be faster than the smaller marble. But every time I tested the larger marble, it would always be slightly slower than the smaller marble. I found out this because larger marbles have a larger mass, like if you pick up a bowling ball next to a tennis ball. So when you put the small marble down, it has honestly no re resistance against it. Instead of the larger marble where you'd always have to coax it down to the end of the track. So instead of the larger marble being faster, I found out the smaller marble would always be faster to have a slightly less, slightly less time than the larger marble. Hi, my name's Avery Timmons, and my project today is taking the S out of SAT, and what I wanted to look into was the effects of women's menstrual cycles on their academic achievement on college entrance exams. So, the purpose of my project was to find out that during the different phases of your menstrual cycle, which let me let you look at a little graph over here. So there are four phases of your menstrual cycle. There's week one, which is when you're usually bleeding, and then there's week two and three, which hormones are pretty high, and so you're academically really successful and you're highly motivated to do things. Often you know as this for like when you should be making babies. <laughs> week four is when you're often about to start your menstrual cycle, so it's called the premenstrual phase, and this is when you start feeling symptoms of like fatigue, you get tired, you feel like you should just take a nap or not even go to school. So what I did was I had over 100 females at my high school who were in high achieving females in AP classes. They took a mock exam of the SAT, which was 20 questions, and it was part reading and part math. Then I had them do a questionnaire on their menstrual cycle characteristics, and that was, that was to be able to have me calculate when they're on their face. So like whether they were about to start menstruating, when they were menstruating, or when they were like supposed to be most successful on their test. I then took those results and combined them into different groups. And what I have here on this chart is that this first line right here of the combined early follicular and late luteal is when they were menstruating or about to start their menstrual cycle. And females had a combined score of 9.58 out of 19 points they could score. Then when you compare it to the combined late follicular or early luteal, which is when they're supposed to perform really well, they scored 11.08 points out of 19. That's a 1.5 score difference. Using the statistics I have from AP Stats, I was able to determine the significance of my results. From that, I used a, a one-tailed unpaired t-test, and what I was supposed to find was a significant value would be P equaling 0.05. When I did my significance test, I got 0.012, which is extremely significant. So from that, I concluded that females actually do suffer when they're on their, when they're menstruating or bleeding, or when they're about to start their menstrual cycle. And then you're more successful on those weeks two and three when you're like ovulating and your hormones are high. I really hope to like further this and help females with migraines and just help us be more successful because I believe we can be. My project is the deep lutinator. Um, I love the ocean and everything. Um, when I went to Jekyll um, a few a year or two ago, there was a lot of trash in the water, and so um, I was thinking about that when we were researching what project we would do. And so um, I wanted to find a way to clean up, ha to help clean up all the um, trash in the ocean. So I had two different designs. So the first one was just um, the motor having to be waterproof and then everything going down through it. And then as I was building um, during my second, uh, we were doing research on how to um, filter out. I was gonna do trash and oil. But then when we did research, we were um, finding out that oil was gonna be, it took hours to filter through. We decided not to do oil and just to do trash. And so the pump here, it pulls in water from the long, longer tube. 
and then it spits it out through this tube and then it goes through the filters. There's two different filters because there's um, different types of trash. There's bigger trash and smaller trash. So the bigger trash would get caught in the first filter and the smaller trash would get caught in the second filter. The first filter is just one layer of filtering and then the um, second filter is two layers of filtering. And so all the trash will get out. And even the first one caught smaller pieces of trash. There's a piece of foam that's on it, on the side of this. It makes it float to a certain level in the water, just about below, right at water level, um, but below it. And um, that made a total difference because some of the trash went to the bottom. Some of it was at the top. So that made a difference. So you could get it at the top and then it could get it at the bottom. Well, my project was pretty much to build a Google Assistant, but using, well, an AI really, the, using cheaper materials. And as long as you already have a microphone, speaker, mouse and keyboard, and HDMI cable, all you need to do is build the main piece of the project, which is the little Raspberry Pi, which is right in there. And the nice thing is that it actually works. And just to clarify, I did all this legally. I became an official de a developer for both Amazon, uh, who I don't exactly like anymore, um, and Google. The way you make this work is that you just ask it, okay, or you just say, okay, or hey, Google, and then ask it a question. Like, okay, Google, what is two plus two? The answer is four. As long as you're not asking a question that requires it to predict the future, access a video on the internet, or access an app, it will work perfectly, as long as it can hear you. It's honestly really simple. The sad thing is that because I'm using the Google, because I'm, uh, because I'm having to use the Google's uh, source code, uh, I had to become a, well, as I said, a registered developer for Google, so I can do this legally. And because I'm, well, because that happened, I had to use their code. But otherwise, all the code that went into it is mine.